after Brexit, we want all the new jobs we can get, don't we? So oh, absolutely. this would be a good boost. And, absolutely. And I think, you know, the use of aeroplanes will grow and grow and grow. Uh, I think Gatwick is a more logical place for an expansion. If you just look at the traffic and the infrastructure around Heathrow, frankly, during rush hour, it barely works now. So the idea there's going to be a huge expansion there, I'm very sceptical about. I think a lot of the tourist and holiday business could be pushed to other places. Stansted, Gatwick, airports like that, I'm sorry, they're not in the... As someone who travels a lot from a lot of these airports, they're not in the same league, to me, mm. in terms of quality and in terms of showing off the best of Britain to mm. Heathrow. I mean, that would be my argument. So yeah. You've got a world-class airport, so mm. exploit it, make mm. it bigger, and sort out the traffic issues that Nigel's talking mm. about. All that can be done. We're opening the Crossrail line, the new Elizabeth line, to Heathrow later this year. That will be a huge increase in public transport capacity to Heathrow. You can link it to the Great Western line going west and going south. So you can sort out these public transport issues. But we have got to get real about our trade as a country. Heathrow is by far our most important airport in terms both of business travel and, crucially, also freight travel by, by value. If we don't expand Heathrow, it's not the case that expanding Gatwick or Stansted will take the slack. What will happen is these business flights to all these new emerging markets in China and mm. South America, they'll go to Schiphol in Amsterdam, they'll go to Charles de Gaulle, See, I think and they'll that's go to the key point, which I th that's why I'm surprised that you're well, position I, 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 get, I really, I get the I really do argument. think that's what would happen. No, I, I get the business argument, Piers. I understand that fully. Mm. We've got to be a hub. Schiphol is very efficient. I go through there regularly, and we've got to compete with that. I just feel... There's too much traffic going through Heathrow that is not genuine business traffic. Boris Johnson, of course, is <laughs> the number one opponent of this. Yeah. And on the mm. crucial day, he's done a, a done a runner. It's quite difficult to know, actually, on many things where Boris really mm. stands. But the thing that's typical of Boris, of course, is that he's not going to turn up and vote. And you're happy thing. about that because I'm... he said that he mm. would lie down in front of the bulldozers mm. yeah, I'm not, in I'm order not, I'm to stop I'm not happy at this. all. I think members of Parliament and members of the House of Lords, they, they should vote according to their conscience. The idea on something as big as this, where a junior minister has been forced to resign mm. because they're not prepared to vote for it, that he should just be allowed to swan off to some unknown destination mm. in order not to vote, mm. I think just shows his shirking But if it was a free vote? on the Conservative side, he would vote against yeah, it. Yeah, well, they, sh they, they, sh they could have allowed a free vote, but they haven't. They've decided to make it a matter of government policy. And for him as Foreign Secretary, not even to be present, sort of, sort of sums him up. Um, after Brexit, where are we going to be with flights, planes, Airbus, mm. aviation, freedom well, of movement? Let, let's be clear, whether Brexit happens or not, we need more airport What do you mean, whether capacity. Brexit happens or oh, well, there's not. a good chance it's not going to happen. Well, who year. says it's not as, going as to Nigel happen? and I discuss this all the time. But let's be, I, but you I'm, genuinely I'm, think Brexit won't yeah, happen? Yeah, there's a good chance because we'll have a people's vote. That's why there was 100,000 people on the streets of London on Saturday. But well, hang whether... on, hang on, hang on. There were 1.7 million people... Yeah, well, they could... who mar... well, wait a minute, let me finish. Mm. ...who marched against the Iraq war in London. The will of the people... Mm was not recognised then by Alistair mm. Campbell or Tony Blair, the mm. people screaming loudest mm. now for the will of the people mm. and a people's vote. Why should they do it when 100,000 out of 17.5 million who voted Brexit well, say the big, they don't want it? Yeah, the big difference between then and now, though, huge difference, is then we had a Prime Minister... I mean, I worked for Tony Blair. He did believe what he was... He believed passionately that what he was doing was the right thing for the country. If Theresa May, with this strong expression of the will of the people, moving against Nigel as it is at the moment, if that comes through, I believe, because we've still got nine months to but go... But here's the thing about... Look, look, I'm sorry to happen. bang on about this. We've already had the damn will of the people. That's the point of a yeah, referendum. We, we had the the, the idea... only point of a referendum is to give the people mm. a vote. So had... If the Conservative Party did not take us out of the EU on the 29th of March next year, they're whole below the waterline mm. for the next election. And if the Labour Party oppose us leaving the treaty, they'll lose the next but election Nigel Farage, too. So if... we are going to leave. Now, how we're going to leave, what the terms what are, if, that's the debate. What if the deal is so bad that you, as one of the big campaign leaders, looks at it and, and thinks this is bad for Britain? Wouldn't you oh, want to I, you know, have even, a vote on it? Even during the referendum, you know, I said no deal is better than a bad deal. When we talk about no deal, there is something called the World Trade Organization. There are established rules yeah. by which global trade takes but what place, if it's a bad including deal? aerospace. But what if it's a bad deal? There Theresa May says it's a good deal because you... you oh, all... reject it. If, if it's a bad deal, it no, should be rejected. But what happens if she thinks it's a good deal and you and all of well, the you know hard what? Brexiteers you know think what? it's a bad deal? Here's the important thing. The really important thing is that 11pm... On March the 29th next year, we leave the European treaties. That is the big historic break. And even if the deal is bad and, and, and Parliament so accepts it, we, it we as a sovereign country, country we as a sovereign... Would you want to have a say in it? We as a so, Well, we will do at subsequent elections. The, the, the issue... We didn't vote in a referendum 
on economics, on a deal, whether we thought we'd be better off or worse off. We voted. We had a choice. Do we want to become a self-governing nation, an independent country, or part of a bigger mm. political unit? If anybody thought we were That's going to be worse a... off, do you well, think well, they well, would have well, voted? Well, I think we could be a lot better off. Andrew thinks we're going to be worse off. The mm. point is, the vote was about the independence of this country. Yeah, that, that's where Nigel and I disagree. Mm. Two years ago, people thought they would be better off voting for it. Do you remember the 350 million for the NHS no a one week on the side it, of the bus? No one apparently we're now getting and it. And now it's a 39 <laughs> billion... £39 billion pound exit yeah. fee for leaving, I think people's opinions will change. We're leaving. Quite we're leaving. If we get your people's vote and it overturns Brexit, why should there not then be another vote? Absolutely. Because a lot of Brexiteers will say, well, we want another one. Because yeah. that will have been the vote on the deal. And oh. we're, we're, that was, we're, we're, not, we're not going to revisit well, this. When the British Prime Minister, David Cameron, announced that this was a one off mm. vote, he never said yeah. there'll be another vote yeah, on what the did, deal. And what did he do? The day after the referendum, he resigned and walked away. The rest of us are having to pick up the pieces at the moment, mm. and part of picking up the pieces is to reach a decision as a country on the deal.